It's that time of the week again, everybody. Time for another rebuild, and this time we're heading over to Sporting Club de Portugal to try and deliver them their first ever Champions League. That's right, everybody. We are rebuilding the Portuguese giant, sometimes referred to as Sporting Lisbon if you're in the UK, Sporting if you're in Portugal, or even Sporting CP. I've had so many comments and videos in the past where I've called them Sporting Lisbon and Portuguese people come at me and tell me that is not what they're called. So today, after some Wikipedia research, they're apparently referred to as Sporting Sporting in Portugal, so I'm going to call them Sporting for the rest of this video. Hopefully that's going to be okay, but this is a club with amazing facilities, 20 training, 19 junior coaching, great youth facilities and recruitment, and they are a club with a huge history. Founded in 1906, this club is over 100 years old, and they have 19 Portuguese Premier Leagues to their name, only three in the recent millennium, one being in 2021, the others being very, very early on in the 2000s. They were runners-up in the Europa League once, but they do have the European Cup winners Cup in the 1960s. Outside of that though, no real European success. They've got Portuguese League Cups, Portuguese Super Cups. They're one of the biggest sides in Portugal, but in recent years they haven't amounted to too much on a European stage. According to the game, we are the third largest team in Portugal. We have Benfica above us and also FC Porto. And if we have a look at the recent history of the league, outside of us winning it in 2020, it has mainly been those two teams dominating since the new millennium and probably even before that too. However, we are here to change things today. We're going to give ourselves five years as manager of sporting and we're going to try and take them to the top of European football. It'll be a tough job, but we've got some great youngsters to help us out along the way. But before we start, as always, I'm going to be a little bit annoying, but it really, really does help if you could just scroll down a little bit, see that like button, click it, forget you ever clicked it. It really helps the channel out and I would massively appreciate it if you do so. And if you are one of the people in this percentage of people that are watching the videos but aren't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you did hit that subscribe button. The jump in subscribers we would have if even like 20% of those people in the not subscribe section hit that button would be huge. So if you are one of them people, maybe you haven't realized yet that you haven't hit subscribe, go on, please do so. I'd really, really appreciate it. But yes, Let's get into this rebuild, shall we? Five years in FM23, we've got a 50,000 capacity stadium. Obviously, the club where players like Cristiano Ronaldo have came from in the past, we'll be hoping we can get some good youngsters like that. But in our squad, we already have some very talented young players. Usmane Diamande is one of those, a centre-back, an Ivorian, bought in from FC Michelin out in Denmark for six and a half million. We have got a transfer update on here, by the way, so anyone that has moved as of... August the 10th. They'll have made their transfer moves by now in this world, so we should see any updated transfers that we would expect. But yes, he is a squad player apparently, but I think he's going to be a lot more than that. He has the potential to be one of the world's best when he looks this good at 18. On top of that, we also have Goncalo Inacio as another great young centre-back, wanted by Chelsea and Atletico Madrid. He's a good ball player, left-footed. Him and Diamande will hopefully complement each other quite nicely. We also have a talented young goalkeeper by the name of Diego Calai, who I'll be trying to get the best out of. Maybe not the best player just yet, but only 17, Brazilian keeper. Lots of years to get better, and hopefully we can use him at some point in this rebuild. But our star players are Sebastian Coates, the Uruguayan centre-back. We also have Hidi Mas Marita in the midfield, the Japanese central midfielder, and Pedro Goncalves, who we'll be trying to build around because he is a phenomenal player in the FM world. That's not to count out players like Nuno Santos, uh, Victor Jokerez recently signed from Coventry to be their striker. We also have Marcus Edwards, an Englishman on the wing who's got plenty of years left ahead of him yet in his career. This is a team with a lot of good talent, but we'll be trying to improve this team, get rid of the old heads, and bring in some new players. We've got about £6 million to spend, so I'll get working on some transfers in the background. In terms of where we're predicted currently, it looks like we're predicted to come third behind Benfica and Porto, as you would expect. 9-1 to one odds to win the title. It's not very likely, but hopefully, if we can bring in some sign-ins, sell some players, we might be able to change that. Now, a bit of a plot twist on this one. In the first season, I just didn't really find anyone that I really felt could improve the team where I wanted them to improve for the money that we had. So there aren't going to be any transfers in season one, but for that, I will give you an extra season in this rebuild. We'll go all the way until six seasons in this one so it might be a little bit longer so strap in I'll try and move through things as quickly as I can but let me show you the tactic that we're going to be running in this rebuild I've gone for a Gagan pressing system a 5-2-3 we've got a lot of good centre-back talent and I'm hoping this formation will get the best out of them we've got Ignacio and Diamande who I'm going to ask to play as often as possible as our ball playing centre-backs we've got two wing backs one on the attack one on the support and then we have I mean you can see it on screen there's no additional instructions or anything this is just the shape I've chosen 
And if we were to pick our best 11 at this point, it would look something like this with St. Justin there, Coates, Antonio Adan is our goalkeeper at 35. Maybe we let him play a season or so and then start bringing in that young Brazilian into the team. We've got Matthias Rice at wing back, who looks very talented. We've also got Goncalves in the midfield, Marita, Nuno Santos, Marcus Edwards, and Jokerez as the rest of the team. Even Trincao is a very good player. We've got a great squad here. We just need to make a few changes to make the team better. Now, one of the reasons I didn't buy too many people is because we have an absolutely stacked development center with so many great youngsters. And I'm going to try and promote as many of them into the first team as possible. But our team is ready now for season one. We haven't done anything. Let's see how the side gets on in our first season. And I cannot take any credit for this whatsoever. This seems to happen in every rebuild where I do nothing in the first season. The team ends up going to win the league. And I bet you now I won't win the league when I start making my transfers. I'll somehow mess things up. But yeah, straight away... Our side has gone ahead and became champions of Portugal. 85 points, three points more than FC Porto. Portuguese League Cup and the Portuguese Cup, we did not win. We're apparently in the Europa League. So maybe we got knocked out of the Champions League. I would have thought we'd been in that. Or not actually, we actually did start in the group stage of the Europa League, finished top of our group in a very competitive group. That put us into the round of 16 where we played against Inter, beat them 5-3, a very good result there to knock Inter out. We then got knocked out by Slavia Prague in penalties. A little bit annoying there. We might have had a chance of some European success, but it wasn't to be this year. But let's take a look at who our best performers were. Who can we build around for the coming seasons? Well, Jokerez was very talented up from a 24-year-old Swede, scored 26 in 24 league games, more than a goal a game, and scored 35 in 34 appearances in all competitions. Diamonde had a great season developing at the back, as did Marita and Goncalves. Trincao also getting his 15 goals. I mean, Goncalves got 16 from the midfield so very impressive from him too but look I'm not going to focus on season one too much I didn't really do anything but now we'll start off the rebuild properly we're going to have an extra five years from here so you'll see six seasons in total including this one we've got six million pounds to spend 40 grand in the wage budget now hopefully I can bring in some players to take this team up a level maybe next time we can win the Europa League challenge for the Champions League we've already won the league title I'm not really counting it but let's see if we can push on from there before we take a look at our transfers in season two don't forget to comment down below who you want to see rebuilt next. I do read all the comments even if I don't get back to them all and every rebuild that I do does come from a suggestion in the comments. This one was suggested a while back. I added it to the list and we did it. So if you have an idea of a good rebuild hopefully I'll be able to get round to it at some point but our first sale was Nuno Santos who was very good for us last year actually 11 assists in that wing back position. He's gone to Leicester for 9.5 million. I believe he didn't have too long left on his deal so he took the cash and we're going to reinvest that in our team. I'm going to focus on younger players in this rebuild because I think in a team like this where we don't have too much money to spend that's the best way to create superstars in our team. Our goalkeeper Antonio Adan has left the club too. He's gone to Al Sad out in Qatar for £2 million. This guy Paulinho, a striking option that we had at the club, didn't really play too much last year. Only two starts. He's gone to Brentford for two mil. A wide player that I didn't really see us using by the name of Rochinha has left the club. He's gone to Atalanta for three and a half million. Looks like he was on loan last year. I did wonder why I didn't recognise him. I just saw him available in our squad depth screen, realised we weren't using him and decided to sell him on. And I've also let Cape Verdean international Joven Cabral leave the club. The 25-year-old has gone to Mines for 4.4 mil. He's been at the club quite a while, had quite a few appearances. Last season for us was pretty good as mainly a bench player, but we decided to take some cash for him. And we actually made more from sales this year than we actually spent on players. It was pretty much an even total. I'll show you in a second. But the players we bought in, the first one is Martin Baterina to be up our midfield and our wide options. A Croatian 20-year-old coming on from Dinamo Zagreb out in Croatia. £12 million is what we pay for him after a good season last time out for them. Three goals and seven assists and a 7.42 average match rating. He's outgrown that division. He comes to us. He's valued at £40 million already. Hopefully, he'll be a great player for us. When Miranda comes in as a left wing back option, the 23-year-old Spaniard signs for a small fee of only £3 million after a decent season out at Real Betis. Former boss Barcelona Youth Academy product. Hopefully he'll settle in nicely and he's a good option at left wing back. If we have a look, he's one of our best with Matthias Reis. And our other signing was a centre-back, Leo Grimil here, an Austrian from Schalke who we signed for 6 million. They even asked for him to be loaned back for the season and I said yes. I felt like it was a good idea. If you have a look at our squad depth at the back, 
we already have a lot of centre backs and Coates is getting quite old so my idea was to buy Grimmel as our replacement for Coates eventually have him go on loan at Schalke for another year then he can come back to us after more football Coates might be moving on then and then we can try and swap them out because he will be quite old at that point but yes this is our squad depth screen at the minute goalkeepers you will see we're left with two options Franco Israel and Diego Kalai I think this year will be the year with Adam leaving that we just let Kalai have a go in the net to try and develop into a top level player he came from the academy so hopefully he'll step in nicely to our first team. I'll quickly click around so you guys can take a look at the players that we have in each area, but you can see we are looking pretty stacked. An issue with Sporting's team that I've noticed though is they have so many players in their squad, so many players that we'd never use. So I'm just starting to get rid of them slowly. But we have promoted some young talent into the first team this time around. We've got Rodrigo Ribeiro, who looks like a promising talent in the side. We've also got Goncalo Estevez, a young right back that maybe will make it big in our team. Lots of good players here, a very promising season ahead and if you look at our best 11 now this is apparently what we're left with so hopefully this goes well I feel like we're building a very nice squad here so let's see what they can do in season two and I predicted this would happen didn't I I said when we did nothing we won the league. Once I make my transfers, we won't. And that's exactly what happened. We lost the league title by three points to Benfica. We had more goal difference than anyone. But as Porto and Benfica all finished very close to each other. We did win the Portuguese Super Cup, which is great. I don't know the last time Sporting won that. There you go, back in 2021. So actually not that long ago. So maybe it isn't that impressive after all. League Cup, we got knocked out. The Portuguese Cup, we lost the final to Porto 1-0 in extra time. We got to the round of 16 in the Champions League, though. That is pretty impressive if we have a look in the group stage we came second in a group with Napoli Galatasaray and Real that put us into the round of 16 where we played against Man City Let's not talk about that scoreline, 8-2 on aggregate, definitely not our best year. We're going to pretend like that never happened, but at least this season we did give some opportunities to young players, and that's hopefully going to pay off in the long run. We're never going to be able to topple Porto and Benfica straight away. We need to give the right players the right chances, and Diego Calai was brilliant in goal this year for us. A 7 average match rating for only a 19-year-old is very impressive. I also asked Ignacio and Diamande to play as many games as possible from the assistant manager, and they've been developing very nicely now, but becoming top level centre backs in the Portuguese division and arguably maybe even in the world. Another fantastic year from Pedro Goncalves, our best player in terms of average rating, 11 assists, 20 goals from the 25 year old, very impressive there. Bacharina also looking very good, developing really well too. The Croatian is now an international and scored four goals and got 12 assists in the league in 33 matches. So second season, not as good as our first, but we are building a very good young side. So hopefully that leads to success in the future. We've got 15 million pounds to spend not too much considering there is 30 odd in the overall balance but we're not going to complain too much we've got money let's spend it and improve this team our first sale of season three is quite a controversial one though we let Sebastian Cuartes go as he had one year left on his deal and he didn't want to sign an extension at this point he's very good but the team he's gone to is what's going to cause a controversy he's gone to FC Porto for 3.6 million started most of our games last year a very talented player he will be missed a leader as well but at the age of 33 we can take the cash, we can reinvest it, and hopefully it won't cause too many problems in the long run. Young centre-back Eduardo Caresma looked like he was never really going to be good enough for our first team, so he's gone to VTSC for 1.2 mil. Victor Jokerez has actually left the club. We tried to extend his contract, there was a bit of tension there. He then decided he wanted to leave, and then Celtic came in. He said he'd be annoyed if he wasn't let to go to Celtic. So we let him move on. I mean, it doesn't represent it here because I'm using a mod pack basically as a transfer update. But Sporting spent like £16 million on this guy and we've just made £2.5 million back. A bit unrealistic for sure, but yeah, he's gone. We're going to have to replace him. Jokerez is out the door. A weird one, considering he was doing so well, but I think because the transfer update doesn't necessarily show that he moved for £16 million, the game still valued him at a really low valuation, and that's why he went for so cheap. Even now at Celtic, he's only valued at £6 mil. And we've also sold this guy, 22-year-old Greek midfielder Sotris Alexandradopoulos tried I tried my best guys I feel like I might have actually hit the nail on the head with that pronunciation but he's gone to Torino for 2.8 million he's been with us since the start went on loan to Olympiacos didn't do great came back to us barely got a start so we've let him go for a bit of cash I'm very happy with our signings this year though I feel like we've done a great job and found some real good value players the first one is just a squad player by the name of Takihiro Kunimoto who joins us from Jotar DT out in the Malaysian divisions only 135,000 pounds for a player that looks pretty 
pretty decent, so I'm definitely going to take him as a wing option at the club. Another player from Dinamo Zagreb, Bosco Sutalo, joins us, a Croatian 24-year-old centre-back for £8 million. Look, he's maybe not the world's best centre-back, but he will offer us some depth. Obviously, we signed Gremel last year, Cuartes has left, Sutalo comes in, he takes up Karezma's squad spot, and I think he's a much better player than he was. Victor Jokerez is replaced by a very good young striker that I'm very excited to use, Marcus Leonardo, our new number nine, signs from Santos for £15 million. Pounds. The guy has got bags of talent, bags of ability, and he already looks so good in terms of his starting attributes. I really do think this could be a transfer that makes or breaks this rebuild. If he can step up and straight away fill in Jokerez's goals at only the age of 21, the future is going to look very bright for us. And we've also signed this guy, Greek 21-year-old Giannis Constantelias. He's got nine international appearances and five goals at the age of 21. Amazing technique at 19, 18 dribbling, 17 first touch. I have no idea how I've never came across him before. 17 flair, agility as well. He's been signed from Powok for 22 and a half million pounds, a very promising talent and I really do think he could be like the hidden gem of this rebuild that we find. I say hidden gem, he might not be but I've never heard of him before and he looks unreal in Football Manager. And our best 11 is really starting to shape up nicely now. We've got Calais in goal, a young back line of Ignacio Diamande and Sotalo. St. Just is at wing back. He isn't normally a wing back but I think he's been retrained to play that position by the assistant manager. Matthias Reese, back Charina, Marita, Trincao, Goncalves and Marcus Leonardo make up the rest of the team. Plenty of good young talent on the bench too. This side is set up for success, hopefully, in season three. So let's see how we get on. And our patience in the youth has paid off because we have won the Portuguese Premier League. The first time we've actually contributed to them winning it. 77 points, joint points with Benfica. We have been given the league title. Porto only one point behind. It's so close between these three teams and the fact that only two teams get a Champions League spot is kind of criminal runners up in the Portuguese Cup, semi-final of the League Cup, the Europa League we were in this year I believe. We came second in the league phase, up there with Man United and Olympiacos, that put us into the round of 16 where we knocked out Stuttgart 6-4, the quarterfinals we took out Young Boys 5-2 on aggregate then in the semis we lost 5-1 to Atalanta, very embarrassing really but they did eventually win the finals, Zapata looks like he had an amazing Europa League campaign with 20 goals and a 7.94 average match rating I guess you can't really compete with that but we we almost came close on a Europa League front. Third season down though, no sign of a Champions League or Europa League just yet. It's still quite a way off. But our team was very good this year. Kalai doing very well in the net. One of our best performers. And now at 20 years of age, he's really starting to grow into his own in the net. A 7.22 average match rating from him is very, very good. St. Just also doing well. Goncalves and Marcus Leonardo stepping up to the plate. 24 goals and 30 appearances in the league for only 16 million. That is a transfer and a half. Valued at about 50 mil. 43 goals for him. And Marita Trincao doing well. There is a slight issue this season though that I have just noticed. And that is that Marcus... Martin Baccarino wasn't in our squad list and I've had a look and he's actually left the club on a release clause deal in January. Obviously we holiday the season so I don't get to see what happens in the meantime. I set it to reject all offers but this must have meant that Baccarino's release clause was activated. He's left the club for 38.5 million which is a big profit increase on the 12 mil we paid. I'd argue without the release clause, we could have got a lot more though. And he was playing very well for us. He's now valued at 74 mil at Bayern, but it's bye-bye to him. At least we make some money. And hopefully that means we've got a big budget to spend this summer. We do, 33 million pounds to spend, 80 grand in the wage budget. Let's see what we can do with this team in season four. Before we get into the transfers, if you are enjoying the video up to this point, go ahead and smash that like button for me. I'd massively appreciate it. Don't worry, I'm not gonna ask you again in this video. You're safe for now. But Juan Miranda is our only major sale to talk about he's gone to Nice. 11 million pounds could potentially become just under 15. First season he played most of his games on the bench. Second season he did a bit of a mix of starting and being benched but we've made a pretty big profit on the player that we got for so cheap. I'll definitely take it and I think we've bought a better player in his place and for much cheaper too. I think Aaron Martin is a much better wing back option. Yes he's older but we've signed him for only 6.25 mil. He comes in from Genoa where he's been very good for them in Serie B and Serie A. A brilliant crosser of the ball, great free kick ability as well. He's going to be very good going forward for us. We've signed Jean Virginia as a backup goalkeeper, a Portuguese national.
international coming in from Everton on a free. Another free transfer was Mykola Shaparenko. He joins us from Dynamo Kiev out in Ukraine. A good season for them, a good three seasons actually in a row. We've picked him up for free as a backup option in the midfield. A new central midfield option that we paid for though is Juan Ignacio Nardoni, a 23-year-old central midfielder who's very good at going forward but also can do the defensive side fairly well too. We've signed him for 9 million from Racing Club out in Argentina after some great seasons out for them, particularly in recent years. He looks like a phenomenal talent in the midfield and comes in as one of our best in that centre mid spot alongside Marita. And to finalise our transfers for the summer, Samuel Birindelli has joined us, a 26-year-old Italian right wing back option. Very good going forward. He joins us for £12.5 million from Brianza. That's Monza in real life. I think the name fix isn't quite working there. But yes, he signed for them for 1.3 from Pizza. Played well there for a few years, had a good season. Our scouts raved about him and we signed him. If you don't know already, I only sign players based on the scouts' knowledge in these rebuilds. I don't use my own because I play FM a lot and I probably know who to buy. So not the craziest summer in the world here in season four. With the money we're getting, it's really hard to build an elite level team that we could use to actually challenge these big teams in the Champions League. It might be that Europa League is the best one we can go for, but we are in the UCL this year, so we'll see how we get on. Here's our best 11. Not too much changing, but it is a very strong lineup now, and hopefully this will lead to big things in season four. And it certainly did, because not only have we won the Portuguese Premier League on 79 points, joint with Benfica yet again, but we won the Portuguese Cup, we won the League Cup, and we won the Super Cup, making it a domestic quadruple. We also got to the Champions League quarterfinals. It was only Manchester City that were able to knock us out, and it was actually a lot closer than before. 4-3 on aggregate is not a bad result at all. We knocked Newcastle out to get here. In the league phase, we finished in 21st spot, so we're not doing too bad. We knocked out Barcelona 5-1 on aggregate in the knockoff playoff round, so we're doing very well. Knockoff? Knockout playoff round, should I say. But yes, uh, the team is developing very nicely. We're starting to compete with some of the big boys. We're starting to dominate in Portuguese divisions, and it's been a great year for us. In terms of the overall performers, Marcus Leonardo, fantastic yet again, becoming the best player at the club by far now, valued at 38 million. He scored 29 in 30 league appearances, 7.46 average match rating, and 52 goals in 52 league appearances. Here's a young player that came out of our academy that's looking very good, Umar Saab. Good on both feet, can play on the wing and also up front, very quick. Is he the new Cristiano Ronaldo? Obviously not, but we can make that comparison. Why not? He looks like a very talented player at 19. We'll be hoping to get the best out of him. Nardoni had a great year with 10 goals. Trincao doing well again. Kalai again, developing in that goalkeeper position. 21 years of age now and coming along very, very nicely. Marcus Edwards was very good this year with 17 goals. Goncalves not being the best player in the team anymore, but still contributing with 13 goals there. Usually I'd say we're going into our last season now, but remember I gave you an extra season as you guys have been asking for six seasons or an extra season in every video that we do pretty much. So this time I'm giving you it. Season six will be coming soon, but first we've got the transfers for season five. And this is where it gets really juicy because we have sold 140 million pounds plus worth of players. So this is a big window and we spent a lot of that money too. Firstly, Marcus Edwards had a year left on his deal. I tried to extend. He didn't want to. Decided the only thing to do was to get some cash in for him. I offered him out thinking we'd get 40 odd million. We didn't. The best off we got was 18 mil from Juventus, but I'd rather take that than lose him on a free. So unfortunately, he will be leaving the club now valued at 100 mil at Juventus. It seems like a poor bit of business from us but it's better to get some cash than absolutely nothing in my eyes. Manchester City came in for Francisco Trincao and we were unable to stop the man going. We are still not a club that can hold on to these players when the big elite teams in the world come forward. Man City offered like 20 million. I said no, asked for about 53 as you can see there and City just said yes. Trincao was ready to go. He said he'd be upset if we didn't accept. And after four very good seasons for us in this rebuild, it's time to say goodbye. 46 million is a lot to reinvest though, but we are losing a very talented player. If you haven't used him yet in FM, just look how good he is. He's everything you'd want from an inverted winger. And it was only going to be a matter of time after how good he was last year. He's now a Brazilian national team striker. Marcus Leonardo, we couldn't hang on to him. We had bids from Bayern, Man U, Chelsea, Real Madrid. I said no to all of them and Marcus Leonardo got upset. He then said, how can I leave? I said, well, only if they hit a certain amount of money. We negotiated on 72 mil. No club was willing to pay it. Bayern were offering like 32 mil out of a 72 mil valuation, but then out of nowhere, 
in comes Chelsea. You can trust them to splash money on a young player, and they did exactly that. 72 mil, it's great profit for us, really, on what we initially paid for him, but it is going to be very hard to replace Marcus Leonardo. But he is gone, and we say goodbye to him whilst raking in a ton of cash. We made 140 mil, we spent about 60 of it, so we actually did some very good business. Firstly, we brought in a young player on a free, Josh Doig, a Scottish international, 24-year-old left wing back option. He comes in from Verona on a free after four good seasons for them in Syria. Very impressive from such a young player having been signed from Hibs. No transfer fee for him, I think, is a great bit of business because he is now apparently our best left wing back. Speaking of good free transfers, we lost Marcus Edwards. We lost Francisco Trincao. Who do we replace him with? Well, Jaden Sancho was a free agent. No idea what happened with him at Manchester United. Looks like his career just kind of fizzled out. I went ahead and approached to sign him expecting that he'd want like 200 grand a week. He settled on 55 grand a week. And I think that's a great deal for us. He's still 26. We're hoping he can hit that form that he had at Borussia Dortmund for us here. But either way, Jaden Sancho is in. And I think that's a great bit of business for free. We lost Marcus Leonardo up front. We had to replace him. So he went to RB Salzburg, of course. Where else do you get a good young striker from? And we signed Rocco Simic, a six foot three striker for only 17 million. He doesn't look like he's a prolific goal scorer according to his history at Salzburg. But looking at his attributes and the way the scouts rated him, I think he could be the real deal. Six foot three, Croatian international, great physical attributes, strong, quick and tall, good with the ball at his feet, good mentally as well. I'm very excited to see what he can do. And we also signed some competition for him as well. A very good young striker, eight goals in 20 appearances for Tunisia, a new gem player, a 19 year old by the name of Mohsen Hamruni, who joins us from ES Tunis out in the Tunisian divisions. Only 10 million for a player this good is a bargain and him and Simic can really compete now for that striker spot. Obviously we signed Sancho, but we did lose Marcus Edwards and Francisco Trincao, so we needed an extra winger, and we went for Angolan 24-year-old Zito, who joins us from Cagliari out in Serie B for 13.25 mil. He was good in Serie A, very, very good in Serie B, and I think he could be a very nice squad option to have for the amount of money we paid. He looks like he should fit the bill as that inverted winger, left-footed, cutting in. Hopefully, he can be the real deal. And last but not least, we have signed a midfielder, a deep-line playmaker to back up Marita, who is now in his 30s 31. We need to start thinking about the future. So we have signed the Frenchman who's valued at 50 million by the name of Enzo Loidis. And he has been signed from Las Palmas, where he's been very good in the first division. We did pay a pretty big fee in 26 million, could rise to 28, but I feel like he suits the team nicely. He's what we needed. And now if we have a look at our best 11, it's looking very promising. Collising goal with Diamande, Sutalo, Ignacio at the back, Birindelli and Matthias Rees complete the defense with Nardoni, Marita, Sancho, Goncalves and Rocco Simic. Is this the worst team than last year? In terms of star quality, maybe. In terms of the potential of the side, definitely not. And in terms of squad depth, we have got way better squad depth now. So hopefully we can see some big performances this season. Season five, let's see how we get on in what would have normally been our last season. And it's a very similar story to the year before. I'm kind of glad this isn't our last year. Um, one interesting thing to note, there is an extra Champions League spot now in the Portuguese league. So clearly our performances in Europe have been helping. Um, but we've absolutely smashed the league this year. We've got a 12 point gap between us and second place family Chacau who are predicted to come sixth no idea how they've done so well but Porto and Benfica have really fallen off this year we won the Portuguese Cup lost the League Cup to Benfica I say they've fallen off they beat us there and we also lost the Super Cup 5-0 to Porto let's not talk about that that would have been very embarrassing Man City knocked us out of the Champions League in the quarters yet again this time on penalties so close that time around. We knocked out Man U to get there as well, 3-1. We are looking like a very good team. We can compete with Barcelona. We've knocked them out again. Beating Man U, competing with Man City. These are the biggest clubs in the world. And in the league phase, we finished in 17th. So we have got that potential to do really well. We just need to take it up a notch. And we've got one more season to do so. In terms of average match ratings, it looks like Rocco Simic. Oh, wow. An unbelievable season from him. 43 goals in 31 starts is incredible numbers. Um, Marcus Leonardo, we might have replaced you already, mate. That was a very good performance from Rocco Simic. Goncalves doing well. Zito as well, 14 goals from him. A very nice debut season for a man that cost us only 13 million. Diego Calai really becoming a top-level goalkeeper for us now. Three and a half star player, wanted by some big clubs, but we are going to offer him a new contract, hopefully. The young striker as well, Hamruni, came in. He scored 24 goals in 27 appearances for Tunisia now. He's looking very dangerous. He scored 12 goals in 25 league appearances 
Only 19 of them are starts, so not bad numbers at all, and plenty of potential to get better yet for the Wonder Kid. And this is usually where the rebuild will end, but we're going to try and continue it for one more season. Our reputation has gone up a little bit. Our youth facilities, coaching, junior recruitment are looking a lot better too. Financially, we've got £20 million in the budget, only £9 million to spend this summer. And if we have a look at the debts and loans, that started off at about 200 mil, I think. So we have knocked that down a little bit. But I won't keep you guys waiting any longer. We haven't got much money to spend, so it might not be the most exciting final window, but we'll see what we can do with it. Let's start with the sales. Goncalo Ignacio, after five seasons of being with us in this rebuild, had one year left on his deal. Offered him a new contract. He said, no, I want to leave because there's interest in me. Spurs came in for him. He said he'd be upset if he didn't join Spurs. I'm a Chelsea fan, so God knows why he'd want to do that. But he's now valued at 80 million at Spurs. We got 40 mil for him, which I don't think is too bad. He's not been as incredible as you might have thought. If you have a look at his average match ratings, never really hit the heights that Diamonde has been hitting, but clearly a very good player and we will miss him, but we get 40 mil in. Shaparenko, we signed on a free deal a few years ago. He's now 28. Played plenty of games for Ukraine, but for us, he never really took off, wasn't starting too many games. So we've made a profit of 15 million pounds on him. Jerry St. Just has also left the club now at the age of 30. He has gone to Wolves. Another one way he had a year left on his deal and we just decided it was a good time to sell him on as opposed to offering him that new contract. And he goes for seven seven and a half mil. And Matthias Reese, who's been with us since the start, decided he wanted to leave for a new challenge and off he goes to Ukraine to Shakhtar to play over there. In comes Luca Romero on a free deal from AC Milan. Never really hit the ground running there after his move from Lazio. When he did play, he did do quite well, but never got too many starts. He comes in on a free. We could make some money off of him in the future or he'll be really good for our first team. I don't really know. He's just a depth option for now. I just saw him available for free and I thought I had to take that opportunity up because I know how good he can become. Ignacio has been replaced at the back by 26-year-old French centre-back Anthony Roulat, who joins us from Toulouse, who are in the second division, and that might be why we were able to get him for such a good deal. But he's a very strong centre-back option. 20 million could eventually become 24. He's everything I'm looking for in a centre-back. Right-footed, obviously Ignacio is left-footed. That might cause a problem. But he comes in as our most talented defender, up there with Usmane Diamonde. So hopefully at the back together, they can form a great partnership. And then I went ahead and signed three new gem players. So I won't stick around on these for too much because I know you guys won't won't know who they are, obviously. But we signed a ball-playing centre-back, a wonder kid by the name of Balthazar Castillo. Love that name. 9.75 million from Independiente. Comes in as a good defensive option. As does Thomas Valaccia, who comes in a 19-year-old Argentinian centre-back. Five million pounds from Estudiantes, I think is a good deal for a player that's clearly got a lot of potential. Not as good of a ball-playing defender as the last centre-back that we looked at, but extra depth is never a bad thing. The most exciting one, though, if you were actually playing this as a real save, would be this 18-year-old, Ignacio Fernandez. 18 technique. 15 passing he looks like he could be an amazing deep line playmaker number seven for us 6.25 million I think is a very nice deal and he is kind of going to be there as Marita gets a bit old and he can slowly take his place is my idea so there you go there's our final team and our final best 11 it's Diamonde, Kalai, Sotalo and Castillo at the back with Berendeli, Josh Doig, Nardoni, Marita, Sancho Goncalves and Rocco Simic up front the team is ready there's one season left let's see what we can achieve and boy am I glad that we continued this rebuild. I mean, in some areas, it was very disappointing this final season, but we are not going to care when you see what happened. The Portuguese Super Cup, we won, knocked out in both of the League Cup and the Portuguese Cup. We came third in our division. Benfica getting 90 points and is only getting 77 but we can be forgiven because the chances are we were losing more games because our Champions League run continued for a lot longer than expected. We won the title, beating Arsenal in penalties in our last game. Let's have a look how we got there. League phase, much, much better this time round. Only three points off being the top team in the league phase. Rocco Simic scored 15 Champions League goals and is now one of the most sought after forwards in world football, I would have thought. But yes, straight qualifying, not even for the knockout playoff round, straight into the round of 16, where we played Chelsea, beat them 1-0 in aggregate, quite a close game actually. Quarterfinal, we face PSG, beat them 4-2. A 2-1 win at their home stadium is very impressive. Semi-final, we got Dortmund, not the hardest in the world, really, is it? Arsenal and Atletico Madrid, the only teams left at that point. It did look quite winnable from then on. 7-4 aggregate win against Borussia Dortmund. Put us in the final against Arsenal, where I would show you the highlights, but it looks like there wouldn't be any, as we only beat them in penalties. Luca Romero missed first, but then so did Tete. Saliba missed, and then it was Thomas Valaccia 
who scored the penalty to give us the trophy win. The young 20-year-old centre-back that will live with him forever, but we have won the Champions League in our final season, delivering it to Sporting Club de Portugal, Sporting Lisbon, Sporting CP, Sporting, whatever you want to call them, we have done it. Facilities are looking great, we've got a great young squad and plenty of players in the dev centre who look like they're going to be huge talents in the future as well. Cleared a lot of the debts and loans as well, the staff situation is looking phenomenal, we have smashed it in this rebuild. You guys might say it doesn't count because we had to do six seasons, but I'm not going to care. We have got that trophy in the bag. Four and a half star reputation and this rebuild is complete. If you have enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.